raining. been raining all day. The sky is gray, the outside's gray, I am gray. It's like sweatshirt, sweatpants, comfy. Should be in the house, sleeping in a bed. Can't really do that, but I'm out here. It's also not terribly cold, which is awesome. Just a word to my fellow Kentucky gardeners, um, do not put out your plants yet, like your summer plants. Like don't put out any tomatoes, don't be fooled by the somewhat warm weather because we're about to drop down to possible snow. And then we're gonna climb up to like 80 degrees. Hopefully not really quickly because that always scares me. Whenever it's really cold and then it gets really hot all of a sudden, that usually is accompanied by things like tornadoes, which I don't really want. Anyways, let's have a look-see. Look at my garlic. Look how happy it is. So happy. This is where we direct seeded some stuff yesterday. Did you guys hear that? I feel like every time I'm filming, someone is always like shooting guns. Someone's always shooting a gun out here. So just if you hear that, that's what that is. Absolutely thrilled to see that my peas are coming up. Look at them. Yay. So I ended up planting some on here and then... I also planted some just in random spots around the garden on the fence. But honestly, that's all that's going on in the garden right now at this point in time. I don't have any row covers or anything, so whatever's out is just stuff that is can survive the super coldness. I feel like after this next cold snap, maybe, maybe then it'll be go time. You guys aren't out in the rain? No? No, actually, the reason why I'm out here is because I need to do something with the chicken food. It's a little dark in here. Hopefully you can see me. We keep the chicken food in the garage. I actually had it out in the carport for a while. Um, and at first we had it in bags and then of course the raccoons were getting into it and we just lost a lot of food that way and we're feeding raccoons, which I don't wanna do. And then we put it in a cooler because that way it would stay shut. Dude, they got into the cooler. <laughs> like they are, they are crafty and strong. So now it's in the garage and the garage has to stay shut all night long and it's in a cooler in the garage. So we get their food from a local um, feed place, Baghdad Feeds. Um, I don't, I guess he got the scratch. I don't know where he got the scratch from. That's like a special treat for them. They don't even really need that. Can I help you? So just a little while ago, I started fermenting their food. You can look that up on YouTube. There's a bunch of videos about it um, and a bunch of different ways that people do it. Mostly it's just like you put the chicken food in a bucket with water and let it ferment. Kind of like, you know, you let your sourdough starter ferment, you let cabbage ferment, you know, just like you do ferments. But um, you don't have to add salt or anything though. The whole purpose of it is it helps stretch the food farther so you're paying less for food and it's supposed to help them absorb the nutrients better and all this stuff. And what's interesting is like, my chickens like it more. I did it and I was like, we'll see how it goes. But like, they really were excited about it. They always will go for the fermented food. So I was doing that. And then I, the kids didn't want to touch the fermented food. Even though I have a strainer and everything, they were not about it. So they kind of didn't, it just, I need to restart it. So like how much you put in is up to you. This will pretty much double in size. Because it takes a few days to kind of get going, I'm gonna jump start it by using hot water. So I got hot water from inside the house. That's my main problem with my, my sourdough starter is that our house a lot of times is very cold and so it just won't rise. It's like having it in a fridge. That might need more water once it absorbs a lot of the water. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a top on it. Just trust me, you don't want something getting in there. So I've been thinking about bird food, chicken food lately. What can we grow here? And they eat a ton of table scraps, like just everything. And they free range all day. So they're always eating worms, bugs, grass and different weeds and stuff like that. So they, I mean, they do pretty well, but I'd like to be able to grow some extra stuff. I was thinking about getting like a bag of the black, 
sunflower seeds, like, you know, a big bag, like that they sell for bird seed and planting that. What other grains would they like? Um, we're gonna be doing, I think a mixture in the back, a cover crop later with oats and beets and some other stuff that, that maybe would also be helpful. So do you have any ideas? You know, it's interesting. I hear a lot of people talking about amaranth. Now I only knew amaranth from like the flower farming amaranth, which is very beautiful and very pretty and stuff. But then I started realizing when people talking about using it as a grain, I was like, it's like pigweed. <laughs> I was like pigweed, which the first time I ever saw pigweed, I was like, this looks like an ugly amaranth. So I never really saw a use for that weed exactly, but now I'm gonna be looking into it. And um, that could be good for chickens, but also good for grain to try to make a flower. I don't know, I've never done it, so we'll find out. You know, I wasn't even gonna film anything today, um, but I am so glad that I got out here and started walking around because it's actually really peaceful and beautiful. There's something beautiful about the rain here. And the only reason why I came out is because of you guys. <laughs> so I was like, well, I wanna hang out. Otherwise I'd probably still be in the house. So thanks for coming outside in the rain with me. What I think we should do right now I have a superpower. I don't know if I've ever shared this on here. Maybe I have. I can find four leaf clovers. So we're gonna find the first four leaf clover of 2022. Let's do it. I don't know if this purple shows up on here, but it is beautiful. <laughs> it's little tiny flowers, they're just so pretty. so close to spring see this huge bush this is a uh, wild rose bush and they are gorgeous when they bloom I just saw a bunny rabbit this is a mulberry tree and then there's blackberry bushes all along here that will be awesome here's another rose bush it's fun it's just so nice when you like know it's like you know the property I know what's coming it's beautiful in the stage it is right now but I know the beauty that's coming. And that's very exciting. <laughs> okay, this is gonna sound super savvy, but I we've lived here for a while, but I feel like this year I'm like falling in love with the property again, just because of all the planting and planning and just, I don't know, feels really good. Sappy. My gosh, I feel like, have you ever seen Pride and Prejudice where she's like walking through the rain only she looks really good and I look like... Okay, we found it. First four leaf clover of 2022. It's our four leaf clover for us. Found it with the intention that it will bring us luck. Okay, here it is guys. The first four leaf clover of 2022. Right here. This is, this is your four leaf clover. You're going to have a lucky 2022. We have one, we have two, and we have three. So that's good enough for me. We are going to be very lucky. Those are for you guys. I am now going to go back inside the house and drink some coffee. Um, hope you're having a good day. I'm also going to pot up something. I have to do one thing. <laughs> so I'm going to pot up some plants. But uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Yeah, you think so, huh? Get off my chair. Go on, Raven. Go on. <laughs>